Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to student co-creation of learning materials through custom Moodle role. Um, my name is Jamie Drozda, uh, not Melanie, um, and I'm a coordinator of educational technologies at Thompson River Uni University. And my colleague, Melanie, she sends her regards. Um, she wasn't actually able to come down and attend in person, but she has made a couple audio files that are embedded in the in the presentation, so we should be able to at least hear her contribute. Um, I must admit, I'm a bit nervous today. I'm usually known as the girl behind the computer, which I still am the girl behind the computer. I'm just used to looking at a blank wall in my office rather than actual people. So bear with me if I stumble and stammer just a little bit. Um, to get started, I wanted to show you all our local area. So we're located in British Columbia, Canada. Uh, Thompson Rivers University is located in Kamloops. And this picture here is of Kamloops Lake. And Kamloops Lake is right in between um, Kamloops and a town called Savannah. And I am actually living in Savannah. So Kamloops is on the west end of the lake and Savannah is on the east end of the lake. I've included this picture of a balancing rock, which is very close near my hometown, Savannah, um, because it basically shows a better look of the terrain than that beautiful picture of Kamloops Lake, which has a lush green golf course and then the lake below. But this is actually what the terrain looks like. It's very dry, lots of clay, um, it's very hot in the summer. We have an average temperature of 35 degrees and then very cold in the winter. So we can dip down as low as minus 29 sometimes, but usually an average of minus 10. And this here picture is the Brown Family House of Learning. So this is actually where myself, Melanie, and um, I forgot to introduce my director, Brian Lamb, but he is also a huge advocate for Melanie and I. So to get started officially, um, today we're gonna cover what is H5P, why H5P in Moodle, a classroom example of students created H5Ps, and the H5P creator role in Moodle, as well as the institutional supports that we offer at Thompson Rivers University. So who here um, is familiar with H5P and knows what it is already? Excellent. So I'll just give a small, for those of you that didn't put your hands up, H5P stands for HTML5 package. And it allows you and your students with this role to easily create and share interactive activities that are by default mobile friendly. So Melanie is going to describe the why behind using H5P in Moodle. And hopefully the audio plays here. First off, you might be wondering, why H5P? It's a free and open technology which reduces barriers to access for both educators and students. Also, H5P.org offers excellent instructional documentation to assist with building and authoring H5Ps. On their website, they showcase examples of H5P activities so you can experience the functionality before using it. Then, once you build an H5P, they are transferable. You can create them in a web browser in a platform like Moodle and then download them and use them in another platform like WordPress or Pressbooks. Or you can build them separately offline using apps like Lumi and then upload them into platforms like Moodle. Finally, H5P activities undergo a lot of accessibility testing through means like screen readers and keyboard navigation. The content types have been tested against web content accessibility guidelines criteria. So why encourage student development of H5Ps in the classroom? There are many connections to the universal design for learning framework, such as it provides students with choice over their learning, which is very empowering and can spark motivation and enthusiasm. They can choose H5P activities that are meaningful and authentic to themselves. In doing so, they're building and strengthening connections to their lives, which maximizes learning. 
Also, it allows students to choose and use technology to best express what they know. Not all students effectively express their knowledge through writing, for example. So by providing choice, they can represent their learning in a way that's meaningful to them. For example, one student may choose building a branching scenario to tell a story with different outcomes, while another student may build a series of questions and answers. Further, it promotes curiosity and exploration while nurturing joy and play, which goes hand in hand with learning because let's face it, play is how each of us learned the world around us when we were young. Finally, using technology to demonstrate learning helps develop digital literacy skills within students such as being curious, creative, while solving problems, and troubleshooting when something goes wrong. This brings me to my final question, why did we create the H5P creator role in Moodle? So for some context, our learning technology and innovation team supports faculty and students with learning and using educational technologies in the classroom. So we often notice there are faculty members who want to use the technology with their students, but they're too nervous to, since it might come with a steep learning curve, significant time investment to learn the tool, or it requires them to take on that technical support role with students, which they just might not be comfortable doing. So we wanted to provide faculty with an option of a technology that is easily accessible and free. It's well supported across the institution for both faculty and students and something that was relatively easy to learn and doesn't require significant time to create. We realized a combination of Moodle and H5P would check those boxes and from that the H5P creator role in Moodle was born. Hopefully that brief overview gave you insight into why choose H5P as a technology in the classroom why encourage student development of H5Ps, and why we created the H5P Creator Role in Moodle. All right, thanks, Melanie. Uh, so I just wanted to tell a story about one of the instances um, where this role was used in the classroom. Uh, Dr. Kathy McKinnon, she sought advice on making her human development theory essay for more engaging for students. So Kathy had had quite a bit of feedback from previous classes for this course that they found it really dry and boring. And um, that's her words, not mine with learning theories, but that's the student's feedback she was given. So when I was talking to Kathy, I told her about my experience in my graduate program where I chose to use H5P to submit an assignment rather than write an essay. And I kind of sort of gamified it. And that assignment was very well received by my instructor. And she even asked if um, she could share it with the classroom. And all of my classmates were also really happy and quite curious about how I had made it. So I ended up showing the whole class how to use H5P and how they could also use it to submit assignments, and I might say that the program I was in was educational technology related, so I had thought that submitting essays wasn't really appropriate in an ed tech program. So after sharing my story, Kathy said, yeah, you know, let's, let's let students gamify or make H5Ps for their essay submissions, research essay submissions, rather than a traditional paper format. Kathy was very nervous about implementing this unfamiliar assessment strategy. She had noted at one point that she wasn't even sure what her Apple Pencil did. So how on earth was she going to support her students throughout this assignment when they had questions? So with the goal of making the course more enjoyable and relevant for future social workers, um, I offered her much support. So. I showed her how to implement, allow, grant the students the H5P creator role in Moodle. I went and I made two classroom visits to get the students up and running with H5P. And I also promised um, virtual support for her students as well. So she expressed concerns all throughout the whole process. She was very, very nervous from start until she graded 
the assignments. And after completion, Kathy found that the students' work was very inspiring, inspiring and meaningful. And through the process, even though she was sometimes in, full of anxiety and vulnerable, she did say that this was some of the most inspiring work she had seen in a long time from her students. Students demonstrated the ability to apply knowledge from the human development class to their other courses. courses. Kathy te taught or teaches more than one course each semester in the social work program. And this group of, some of this group of students were in another class she was teaching and she had allowed some, some work, group work time in class and she could hear these students saying, we need to take learning theories into consideration while we're doing this project. And their other student classmates were saying, well, what's that? And these students were able to explain learning theories in a very knowledgeable and meaningful way. And Kathy was so impressed that, that they were able to take, transfer the knowledge from one course to another course. It's something she hadn't seen before. Usually they transfer knowledge when they're out in the workforce after they've graduated. So the assignment structure was, the way the assignment was facilitated, Kathy created forums in Moodle and she restricted those forums to two groups. The students were to submit their H5P, post it through the H5P button in the WYSIWYG editor. And then each group played the H5P and offered a respectful critique of each other's activities. Um, after grading, Kathy also dedicated an entire class where she posted the students' H5Ps in one forum, had the groups post, and then all of the groups could play each other's games, and they had a, many discussions. And one of the students' feedback was, the project was something that in the beginning she was not looking forward to because when she thought of research, she thought of long papers and days filled with reading. And she had told me this was not at all what the project was. It was fun and engaging, and she actually enjoyed doing the research for this project. And I want to say that one of the students in this class, they, um, they decided they wanted to submit H5Ps for all their other classes. So she had the instructors, the ones that allowed her to do it, to contact me to assign her the H5P creator role in their classes, and then she ended up creating multiple H5Ps that semester, and she was a very happy student. So here's an example of one of the groups in this class. Uh, you can see they used the image hotspot activity where each of the smiley faces on this is an image hotspot. You click on it, a window pops open, and there's information via text and then also some embedded videos and audio files in there. So as most people probably know, the image hotspot doesn't allow for embedded test self-testing questions. So they chose to use the question set activity and they posted two H5Ps in their discussion post. Um, so one with self-testing questions and one with all of their research. And it was very well received. I had thought, after looking at all of the games that the students had made, most of them were using the image hotspot and they made some sort of game board and then they had their hotspots and, and pop-up windows and then they used the question set for self-testing questions. And I was really surprised at the creativity because I had envisioned students using um, a different, a just different. It wasn't at all what I expected. I wasn't expecting... Um, this sort of creativity out of the students. So that was a very pleasant surprise. So for those of you that aren't familiar um, with, with maybe assigning students roles in Moodle, I designed this, this H5P creator role to be very user-friendly and allow the teachers full control over who had access to the role. So from the participant list, um, you're going to just basically, as the picture says, select the, the role student in the roles column, select the H5P creator role, and hit the save button. So again, 
super simple for teachers to assign and they are the ones in control. So they don't have to come and ask anyone with some sort of administrative role in Moodle. They can just do it on their own. Um, and it works well for non-editing teachers. So those TAs in the class that you might want to, to have build H5Ps for your students to for supplementary learning. There are some cautions here. If you look on this picture, you can see that all of the H5Ps are displayed. So the classroom really needs to, you need to have confidence in your class. So students are able to see each other's H5Ps. They're able to play them here while they're being developed, but they cannot edit them. Naming structure, is also really important. If a teacher were to assign this role, they would want maybe the names to be the, the naming of these to be the student's name because when you're in a discussion or an assignment, it would be easy to choose the wrong H5P for submission. So there are a few caveats with this role and I simply haven't been able to make them work out. So I guess, I guess I'm maybe asking you all for some help one day if you find a better way to do this, but this is the way I found um, to do it. So the next step for the teacher in a class would be to create a space for students to share their H5Ps. Um, they can be submitted in an assignment in a forum they can be submitted in a type essay question on a quiz. You can, and you can allow students to edit a book, but from my experience, um, myself as a site administrator has to make that permission in a course for a teacher. But basically students can post their H5Ps in any WYSIWYG editor in Moodle where the H5Ps button is at. So that's super easy for them to share their H5Ps with other students. And then next up, Melanie is going to discuss how our team provides support for the H5P creator role. Our learning technology and innovation team provides support for the H5P creator role in Moodle in a few ways. First, through virtual office hours. We hold six hours of virtual office hours in Big Blue Button each week where faculty can drop in and ask questions about H5P, Moodle, or any other learning technologies that our team supports. Second, through email. We encourage faculty to email our team with any questions they have. We have a shared Moodle support email that all team members can access so we can assign the email accordingly. Third, we hold H5P workshops where we manually enroll faculty members in a Moodle course that we've organized to align with our H5P workshop. We assign them the H5P creator role to begin with. Then, in the workshop, we go over how to create H5Ps in Moodle and provide them with time to create their own. This allows them to become familiar with how they can create H5Ps in their own Moodle course while simultaneously experiencing how students would create their own H5Ps in Moodle too. Then, after the experimentation, we change their role back to teacher, like they would be in their own Moodle course, to show them how they can assign the H5P creator role to students. We also go over how they can add their H5Ps to their course and how they can set up spaces for students to submit their H5Ps and interact with one another. Lastly, we make classroom visits. We offer custom classroom visits, which are typically 30 to 60 minutes, where we become a guest speaker in a classroom to demonstrate how the H5P creator role works in Moodle. This helps to support the success of students with this new technology. If you think this H5P creator role would be a good fit at your institution, we will share the XML file and additional details shortly. Excellent. Thanks again to Melanie. So this is my last slide. Um, we have provided a copy of the XML file. 
of the H5P creator role that you can download and use in your institution um, if you want. Um, and we've also in the file set have included a PDF comparison of the student role and the H5P creator role. So for folks who are leery of uploading somebody else's XML file, and I don't blame you, you can easily um, create the role yourselves. Um, and then also, if you want, you can visit h5pintheclassroom.truebox.ca, which is simply almost a replication of the slides. Um, so that's it for me. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Just wondering, um, so administratively, this would be a bit of a challenge, even though you've given the permissions in the participants page, um, when you have very large classes. Um, how, do you, how do you manage or recommend your um, teachers manage group work when using this, this type of activity? And having, do you just give one role, one student in the, in the group the role, or how do you do it? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, at Thompson Rivers University, we don't have very large classes, so that is something I hadn't taken into consideration, to be honest. But uh, when I help facilitate this assignment and other assignments, basically all the students in the class were assigned the H5P creator role, and it was worked out. It was We discussed very heavily with the groups that they need to be mindful of who is editing the H5P at any given time because you can't both be in there editing at the same time. So um, in this particular case, what the students had done was they basically assigned one group person and the, they did this on their own, the groups did, but they dedicated one person to creating the H5P and then and the other students, they would do research, they'd get together as a group, they'd play the H5P, give feedback to each other, and then that one person would go and make edits again. Again, that's, that's just the, how the groups organized themselves and the students did that on their own, but it was very stressed that um, they both can't be in there editing the, you know, students doing it at the same time. They would have to manage the sort of a schedule on their own. It's my wish that, it, that there would be a content bank, each student would get one or each person in Moodle would get their own content bank instead of teachers just having it within a course. Um, I see it much like the My Media plugin that is used for Kaltura. That's my hope one day, but that's not up to me. Is there any more questions? Yeah? Okay, great, thank you. <laughs> so uh, how many students are we really talking about? Pardon? For how many students are we talking about? In a, in a particular class? Yeah. Generally, there's around 30, I, I'd say a large class at Thompson Rivers is about 45 to 60. There are some classes that are 100 and over, but that would be many of the first year classes that are required for many disciplines. Um, but generally, I would say around 30 per class, so quite manageable the way I've set this role up to, for faculty to manage on their own. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. Hello, could you set up uh, team activities in HIP, H5P making it so that three or four students could work as a team uh, towards a particular HIP? So are you suggesting that the teacher create an H5P and then the students come in and no, edit? I'm, no? Uh, no, I would, I mean that the, the same concept that, except that instead of working individually, students would work as a team to create H5Ps. Yeah. Students teams created H5Ps. Yeah, so. H5Ps. So the way it works in Moodle, um, it goes by the profile. So the person who creates the H5P is the editor of that H5P. So collaboration on building the actual H5P isn't really possible right now, unfortunately. It would be ideal. They would have to go outside of Moodle to be able to do that. So at 
Thompson Rivers University, we have our own WordPress instance, and we I can set students up with a WordPress website, and they can create their H5P there, and then they have true collaboration on the H5P, and then they would export that and upload it into Moodle, which is, again, very simple to do, as everyone knows, to port H5Ps from platform to platform to platform. And they can also use um, apps like Lumi to build their H5Ps if they wanted, and then they would, to collab truly collaborate on that, they would have to share the H5P file from student to student to student in the group. Again, there's no real ideal solution for group work with this, but with some creative thinking, we can make it work. Thank you. Uh, Hi, back here. So um, I'm wondering, how, how long did it take you like from conception to design to implementation? What, what's the time limit in the loop to actually getting to get it uh, up and running? And could you share some of the hiccups that you had in the process? Because yeah, we learned from that as well. Thank yeah. you. So do you mean to create the role itself? Yeah, no, but just from the, from, from the conception of, oh, this would be great, and then just trying to convince uh, the team. And so how yeah. long did it take you, like one year, two so, years? Or? So I'm in a very unique, I think it's a unique situation at TRU. I'm faculty, but I'm also site administrator on the Moodle site. So I've got quite a bit of control over a few things there. Um, so when I conceptualized the role, it was really me saying, I really wish students could, could create H5Ps in Moodle. So I have a Moodle sandbox site and I worked there on my own to create the role and I made a few test students there for myself to test the role and I had some test teachers and everything. So when I finally came to something that I thought was usable, I had our system administrator take a look at the role to see if he thought it was something that we could put on our production Moodle site. And he said, once he said yes, because um, I, I don't do anything without his approval because I'm afraid to break production Moodle, to be honest. Um, but when he said yes, I had then had my colleagues, um, Melanie and Brian, and a couple other colleagues go in and take a look and test the role. And then I moved it over to production Moodle and then I started sort of advertising it um, to faculty to start using. And we're still, it's, it's relatively new, so slow to adopt, but we're still getting faculty on board with it. And people tend to be pretty excited about it. Is that an answer? Did that answer your question? Yeah, so would, would that be like in a year time? I just wonder, like sometimes things take so long, but you're in a very strategic position. So yeah, and then maybe a couple of hiccups that you found in the road and then how to overcome it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I think that's it for time. Thank you. Thank you.